Greetings folks, I'm Guy Allen from Unique Cars Magazine. This of course is Higo. Good morning Squire. Morning, how are you? Uh, very well. Now, first auction video for 2022. Yes. Um, Shannon's first big auction and they, they've got bigger these things. Absolutely. Um, there's, I don't know, a few hundred lots. Yes. Um, lots yep. of paraphernalia, number plates, cars. Uh, big field of motorbikes, actually yeah. quite an interesting little field of motorbikes, just yeah. quickly. Yeah. Three premium two-strokes, two RG500 Suzuki's and a, uh, an RZ, for, I had to think, RZ500 wow. Yamaha. So okay. mid-80s, four-cylinder Grand Prix replica two-strokes. Oh, wow. So very desirable these days. They yeah. kind of fell out of favour. Yep. Didn't last long in the market, but they're now very much in demand. So enough of that. We've picked um, a whole bunch of cars we to have, have a quick chat about. Yes. Uh, quick overview of the market. Uh, given the expansion of the market, people couldn't travel. Yes. So they're throwing travel money at toys. Yeah, that's true. Uh, or holiday houses, or whatever, whatever made them feel yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, in tough times, uh, doesn't seem to have slowed down. No. Will it slow down? Look, you'd have to think it might flatten out at some point. It's been going well over two years now. Though. Uh, it's, yeah. like a, it's like a bull run in the market. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you'd have to expect it to calm down at some point. That said. Look, it's one of those things, if you're, if you're in the market for fun, there's plenty of fun to be had, oh, yeah. you don't yeah. have to spend a fortune. No. Um, if you're in it as an investment, um, okay, you need stronger nerves, probably deeper pockets, yes. and hang on to the thing for a while. Yeah. You know, don't be in a position where you have to sell it quickly. Be a bit more strategic about it. Exactly. And yeah. look, the two things aren't mutually exclusive. You can buy a fun toy for not too much money, and with a good chance of at least giving you your money back at the end of it, yeah. which I think Fabulous if you result. can do that, exactly. That's what exactly. it's all about. All right, so let's go shopping. Okay. So we've got our Christmas vouchers in our hand. What have you found? Uh, I wish my <laughs> the Christmas voucher extended to this. I need to save <laughs> all my Christmas vouchers for many, many Christmases. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> anyway, um, there are two E-types right. uh, in this sale. Yes. And that's not so unusual, but what is unusual is they're both uh, Series 1. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. So they're early. They're not super early, they're not flat floors, they're, but they're Series 1, which is right. very desirable. Yes. And they're one of those things, they're both 6s, okay, so they're both 3.8s. Okay. Um, the red one behind us is in Melbourne, there's a black one interstate. Right. Uh, they're they're uh, estimated at around the 120 to 150 okay. area, yep. roughly. Yep. Now, if that's right, that's not as silly as it sounds, no. okay? I had a quick scan of these this morning, and uh, you get the impression they're both fully functional. Yes. And they don't need major work. Right. That sort of money, it's serious money, but it's one of those cars, it falls into what we were talking about a little earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, If you looked after it and enjoyed it, you'd at least get your money back. Oh, yeah. And, and watching how E-type prices have gone over time, I would be very surprised if you didn't get quite a bit more than your money back. Yeah. Right. Okay. Your turn. Right, eh? <laughs> We're going to go across the pond to look at mine. Tell me all about it. Well, not as many vouchers as yours. <laughs> this one's for seventy to $90,000 is the estimate. Okay. It's 1966 A-Code Fastback Mustang. Which is, if you're getting a Mustang, um, is the shape to have, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. If you can't get the 69, which I think is still the pinnacle of all, okay. even the modern ones, yep. one of the early ones is great. This one's finished in ivy green. Now, if you looked at it at a glance, you'd think it was the Highland Green, made famous by Steve McQueen in sure. it. It's so close to it, it's not funny. So it looks fabulous. It's on torque thrust wheels. It's got a 289 V8 in it. Mm -hmm. That's been um, fettled by Mick Webb, who is Alan Moffat's engine guru and a Ford engine guru in his own right. Yep. Tremec yep. five-speed gearbox. It's got coilovers in the rear, so it's had a little bit of work done to it. Mm. It's right-hand drive, but it still looks very traditional inside. It's still got the wood grain steering yep. wheel and things like that. So to me, it's the sort of car that's not going to ever cost you a fortune to, to run and maintain. No, no, they're, no, they're idiot proof, really. Will you get your money back? Probably yeah. get very close to your money back. It's a yeah. pretty bulletproof sort yeah. of um, purchase, pardon the pun. Um, and you know, it's ready to go. So it's one of these ones you can just you know, turn, you know, get on the line, bid for it, win it, come down, pick it up, turn the key, fall in love, and away you go. Next victim, Ford, but totally different. Ford Sundown. Now, yes. as you pointed out, they yeah. came in two sizes. They did. Yes. So you could get the Falcon-based van, Good. right, and the Escort-based van. Yes. Uh, now, this was part of that whole van 
parades. Surf Brief. culture. Yeah, exactly. So for Holden, we had the um, Sandman. Sandman, thank you. Ute and Van. Yep. Uh, for Chrysler, we had the Drifter yes. in Ute and Van. Yep. Oh, and in Holden, if you didn't want the Escort, you could get the Gemini version. That's right. So, right, everybody's up to speed now. Yes. This car uh, running a two litre four okay. um, with a four speed gearbox. Nice. So, nice, straightforward mechanical yep. package, no surprises in it. 50 to 65 <laughs> is the estimate. Yes. That's cool. solid money, isn't it? It is solid um, money. But shows you what's happening to Aussie cars. Okay, Ben's yes. but with a twist. Talk oh, Ben's with a twist, absolutely. This is the uh, 190E 2.5 Cosworth. Mm -hmm. So it's the car that starred in the German touring car series, the Deutsche Tourerwagen Meisterschaft. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. Exactly. Um, and a red hot competitor with, of course, this is, this is the German's equivalent to Ford versus Holden. Oh, totally. Those things versus M3. Yes, correct. Yep. Correct. And a very, very rare car in Australia. I'd be lucky if there's a handful of them here. Um, and I just spotted it and went, oh, you know, I've only seen one in the flesh before, and that was at the Mercedes Museum in Stuttgart. Right. So, you know, to have one here is rather special. This one's done about 80,000 miles. Okay. Um, it's been in, it was in a New Zealand collection for over 20 years, so right. you know, not really used a whole lot. Yep. It arrived here in 2020, undergone a refurb, um, and it looks to be in very, very good condition. You know, um, so the 190E, Cos the Cosworth they were called, because Cosworth got hold of the thing after Mercedes built it, and they tricked up the engine and the gearbox and all that sort of thing. It's got a Getrag five-speed dogleg box in it. Right. Um, it's got the extra aero on it that you didn't get on those other car on the standard 190Es. Um, you know, um, Keki Rosberg raced them, Jochen Maas raced them, a whole lot of Formula One guys mm. that retired moved into that German Touring Car series right, okay. because it was paid big money and it was big on TV. It was huge, it was a oh, massive, yeah. massive series, yeah. you know. All right, hit me with it. How much? Okay, well, <laughs> like that other one, I think it's a bargain because yeah. of what it is. Yeah. 115 to 120,000 okay. asking. All right, if it lands in there, yeah, that's actually pretty good buying. So there you go folks, plenty of variety as always. Have a hunt at channels.com.au and good luck.